Okay, folks, November 13th, 2016. Rich Van Tassel now giving you our weekly Celtics report. Celtics on two straight wins after those three straight losses. Uh, going back to those three straight losses, it started with the loss in Cleveland. Uh, that was last Thursday, so that was past the week. You know, second night of back to back. It was really those two against the Nuggets and the Wizards that are a little disappointing. The Nuggets got away from them. Emmanuel Moutier red hot in the first quarter. Things like that happened. The Wizards' loss was really disappointing. But the last two wins, holding their opponents under 100, hopefully that defense is coming along. They were certainly very active on the defensive end last night against the Indiana Pacers, forcing turnovers, getting out, and running. The rebounding is still very much an issue, and the surprising thing is with the rebounding, I was watching the game last night against the Pacers, a lot of times they're just, you know, either two guys going for the ball and then they're fumbling it out of bounds, or they have, you know, guys in position and they're just missing the rebounding. So I don't know really how you would solve that. Especially nine games in, you would expect maybe in the first few games you'd be like, okay, they're just a little rusty coming out of camp, this, that, and the other thing. But nine games in, you really got to be concerned about that, that they're just failing to grab the boards when they're there. Certainly when Al Horford comes back, he would add a little bit to that. But, you know, Avery Bradley's your leading rebounder. Terry Rozier, very good on the glass for a guard, but you, they need their bigs to really step up in this situation. Crowder's a decent rebounder when he's in. He's been out. But as of right now, the Celtics, they go to New Orleans on Monday, so they have a chance to really uh, spring themselves. Let me check their more advanced schedule here. After New Orleans, which will be on the road, they have Dallas, then Golden State coming in. Then they go for three straight against on the road against Detroit, Minnesota, and Brooklyn. So certainly there's some winnable games here. You got San Antonio after that. You know, you look at Dallas playing poorly. Detroit, a quality team on the road, should be difficult. But none of those road games are back-to-backs at all. They don't have any back-to-backs for a while now. So that's something where they can develop themselves. Their next back-to-back will come after, like, the next 10 games. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so then the 10th and 11th of their next games coming up will be on the road. But a pretty decent schedule for the Celtics coming up. You know, that Golden State one is in Boston. That should be difficult. They've really struggled with Dallas, though, throughout their entire time. Dirk Nowitzki really provides just a matchup problem for them. So we'll have to see how that goes. But there's definitely some wins there on the table. You know, you can't play down to the opponents. So we'll see if they can get rolling, do better on the glass. Certainly that's going to be something to look at in the New Orleans game. As poor as New Orleans is this year, you still have Anthony Davis playing sensationally. So... They'll have to figure that out. Um, Isaiah Thomas, hey, I know I posted in the fan group yesterday talking about why this guy can't be considered MVP. You can say what you want about him, just under 26 points a night. He's getting the big baskets when they need him. That's the knock on the Celtics is they don't have a go-to guy to get the baskets. Last night was not playing well. We all saw the game, but... Um, you know, got to the free throw line a lot. I don't even think he made a field goal in the first half. He was only 4 for 13 total, but he hit some buckets down the stretch. Of course, he did that in the Charlotte game. And you look at it, I mean, Charlotte only has two losses, one of them to the Celtics. Indiana, granted, without Paul George, that's still a road victory. Indiana, it's not like they're completely devoid of talent. You've got Jeff Teagues, you've got Monte Ellis. Uh, obviously, with Paul George being on the court, I don't know if the Celtics would have won that game. But, you know, the Celtics are without guys, too. So you really can't knock any victory in that case. Even if, you know, the Celtics were at their full complement. You play who you play. You play who's playing on the court. And that's all you can do. So uh, Avery Bradley cooling off a little bit. Did not shoot well last night. You look at the Celtics' backcourt, though. They're putting up between the two of them over 40 points a game they're playing very well we'll have to see what happens when Al Horford comes back Jay Crowder comes back and I'd like to see this team really stretch their legs with this favorable schedule coming up and get rolling in the Eastern Conference like I've said many times the Celtics when they're playing well when they're sharp they look very good it's just those lulls they have that they've really got to work on James Young you know 
I, every time I've watched James Young play, and I'll admit it hasn't been that much, I got the league pass this year, but I didn't have it last year. I only saw him really play in that Golden State game last year, the first one of the season. He's engaged defensively. I mean, James Young's problems to me are just he doesn't hit shots, and I, I think they need to get him more minutes, but... I, every time I see James Young on the court, he doesn't look lost out there. It doesn't look like he's not paying attention. It doesn't look like, you know, he's out of it or anything. I know, I mean, Gerald Green, I made the comment. Gerald Green on the defensive end is asleep way too much. That's why I'd give James Young the minutes over Gerald Green. And a better shooter, I think, as well. But like I said, he, I mean, James Young moves well without the ball. He... He's not the greatest defender, but he competes defensively. I don't really see him out of position much on the defensive end, and he gets back in the rebounds. So let's see if they get him some consistent minutes and if he can really start to live off for it. Obviously, he must be struggling in practice. That's why he doesn't get the minutes because I'd see no other reason for it. Granted, they do have a stuffed backcourt, but that's something to keep an eye on as well. Again, Al Horford expected to come back Monday. Let's hope he's all right, ready to go. Going to take him a little bit to get back in the swing of things. You now have uh, Kelly Olynyk back in action. He's making shots. Olynyk. the thing about Olynyk, he's always good in the plus-minus. I'm not talking about the real plus. Well, I am talking about the real, real plus-minus. What I mean by that is the original plus-minus. I don't really pay attention to the quote-unquote real plus-minus, the new sabermetric stat. But he's always there in that regard. So that's important. If he can get going, he's been injury plagued throughout his career. That's something to look forward to as well. But Celtics' favorable schedule coming up. Let's see if they can get rolling. They've won their last two games. Have some road games coming up. But that's the thing with the Celtics. I look at them this year. Last year, they were 20 and 21 on the road. Certainly respectable, don't get me wrong. But I, I'm looking at this team as at least a 30 win team at home. Last year, they were 28 and 13 at home. So at least a 30-win team at home and above 500 on the road. That'll put you right around 52, 53 wins where I had them. So let's get you know everything rolling for this team. Jalen Brown didn't play last much last night. Had a nice block in the game, though. And that's something that's going to have to develop as well. I don't know if he was you know injured or something was wrong. But we'll see what happens. Amir Johnson, got to give him credit, played well last night. That's the thing. It's just too inconsistent with Amir Johnson. But everything, you know, everything's looking all right. They've weathered their injuries thus far and it's still a long season to go. So we'll pay attention to that. All right, so that is it for the weekly Celtics report. Any flash news alerts, we'll give them to you. And for the NFL fans, check out all my NFL videos as well. And remember, we appreciate subscriptions. Enjoy your Sunday.